we are going to be talking about appointments on a Mac computer using Outlook. So Bobby's going to pull up his calendar and we are going to show you first what an appointment is and then also what a meeting is. You're so right, Kaylee. Thank you oh, for yes. that great introduction. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. I, I had to do it. Okay, so uh, we left off. Little Jimmy was in the well. And we didn't know if he was going to live. <laughs> <laughs> we didn't. <laughs> but stay tuned. Lassie's on the way. Uh, <clears throat> so yeah, we kind of we kind of stopped at calendars because calendars are uh, there's a lot to them. There's a lot yeah, going there on. Is. They're they're really important. You know, they can make your day or break your day if you don't have your calendar set right. You you put an appointment at the wrong place. You don't know about some of those features. It can get super frustrating. Yeah. So how we got to this calendar section is we click down here in this ribbon. Um, so when I'm in the mail section, you click down here mm -hmm. and then boom, I'm, I'm on the, the calendar side here. And we have a few things in here that we kind of straggled just Monday through Sunday. So you can kind of look, I don't really like this view. Um, my default I was going to say is, that that view seems a little hard to read with right, the yeah. stuff. So I, I changed it to blue. That looks really different than Outlook calendars on Windows. Just really interesting. I agree. I, I think some of that is it's it's the Screen Connect sessions kind of pushing this out. Oh, uh, okay. I see. So I, I think they're there. Yeah, you just can't see it very well. You just can't yeah. see it really well. Yeah. So I, I think the first thing that you want to do when you're looking at your calendar view is look at your organization tab here and make mm -hmm. sure that you have your view the way you want. Oh, I think this is the grid. There's supposed to be grids. You're just not seeing it. Yeah. Okay. <clears throat> so by default, it's on the week view. So it shows me uh, Sunday to Saturday, right? So, and it shows you here's the time frame, and you can march through by clicking right here to just go to the next week. See how it, it went ahead and just kicked me to, to the, to the coming week there. Yeah. Um, now, interestingly enough, though, it doesn't change your. It, it's showing you that you're still on the first, which is uh -huh. today's date. Um, and then if I click here, I can just jump to a specific week, like there. See how it changed? But it's still showing me that today's the first. Today's the first, yeah. Which is nice. Uh, I, I do want to encourage don't just get locked in on one view here. And what I mean by that is. Maybe I want to come back to the first, right? And I want to get my my first on here. I want to. I really. I really want to spend some time <laughs> in getting this, these appointments lined up correctly on my Thursday. So I might just switch to the day view, and then I can get much more uh, accurate view of what is in this day. Especially if you had, uh, for example, in a scenario like we did here, uh, where we have two appointments. Uh, let's try to stack this appointment on top of other on one day so now you kind of have some calendar collision going on there on monday yeah that's what your calendar always looks like <laughs> yeah that's how my calendar normally <laughs> looks bad to say uh so when i go to my day and i go to that tuesday i think it was, was it a tuesday that i had that calendar yeah on i think it was tuesday in the past <laughs> no it was monday oh monday i should never listen to you no. so <laughs> <laughs> always do the opposite <laughs> yeah of what do I the said. opposite so I get more of an accurate view of what's going on in that day. Yeah. So that's sure. nice. And then when I feel like I've got, I'm like, oh, no, maybe I need to move this to 1, one o'clock. So we're going to wax the cat at 1 because we really want to make sure that we have plenty of time with the dentist office and that test appointment. <laughs> so then I can just go back to organization, and I can go to the week view again. Now I've got my appointment lined up the way I like it, and I have the – more of an overview. And maybe you may want to go to a month. Maybe you're talking to somebody on the phone and you're trying to plan perhaps a conference and you can just right here tab through the respective months. You can do the same thing here, tab through the respective months. Um, it all works the same. Uh, but it gives you that quick option to swing between them and how you can hop back and forth. Um, so it's kind of nice if you hit this month view here and you, you spin through you can really kind of get a good idea of what's happening as a whole 
Um, and then when you right click, you can do a meeting in that day of that month. It's just yeah. going to default to, oh, did you see the bars were there for just a second? The grid was they there for were, a second. They were. And then it And then it popped away. Yeah. It's definitely the, the screen sharing is doing. Yeah. So just a reminder for anybody watching, if yours does have the grid, don't think that yours is messed up. <laughs> right. Yeah, it's supposed to be there. It's supposed to be there. <laughs> uh, so it's going to default to like your starting time of eight and then you can pick another time in there but it because you're on the month view and you right click and say that day it's just going to default um, to a time and then you'll have to change it which is fine yeah so that's a great point each view has its perks for certain moments that you should definitely make sure that that you're used to the day and the week's and the month view just because they're all important in different ways of looking at the calendar, which can make you even more efficient mm -hmm. in the way that you use a calendar. So that's a great point. Yes. So I think one of those are one of the kind of things that you want to do as you kind of saw when I was um, changing my, uh, my colors, right? You can, you can do that pretty easily in, uh, let me go to the month view so I can get back to my day. So let's say that uh, I want to change this color here to something different. I just highlight it and I go to the category and I can just pick another color. Like say, I want that that one's going to be orange. That's kind of nice uh, if you're wanting to to set something like I know I'm going to be traveling and I want all travel appointments to right. be orange. Uh, yeah, that's kind of helpful. To, to, to sort that by and then you can you can pick it here while you're doing it what's also i feel like has been helpful to a lot of people especially nowadays is marking which ones are remote like on zoom or teams or something like that and which mm -hmm. ones you're actually going Great you know point. somewhere for and you can change those different colors just so that you know when you see a blue that means you're going on site so you should prepare a little bit more you know to mm -hmm. leave and stuff like that so now so we've been kind of going back and forth here <clears throat> and doing different appointments but if you notice when i right click you actually have two options you have a meeting and you have an appointment kaylee what is the difference well the difference between an appointment and a meeting is um, the connection between people. So an appointment would be something that you would just schedule for yourself and no one else, but as soon as you add somebody to it, it becomes a meeting. So it, you can even tell because if you go to the organize and you look at the meeting option, it actually has two little people <laughs> next to the meeting, which I think is funny. Yeah, let's, let's, let's do a meeting right now. So yeah. We're going to do a meeting. Let's do a double meeting. Oh, and I want to I want to show something. Uh, so let's do a meeting on Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Okay. And uh, so I I pick that. What's what's wrong here? What's wrong with this meeting we're about to do? <laughs> well, it says this appointment occurs in the past. <laughs> right. So I wasn't paying attention. And I picked the wrong week. And I'm gonna go ahead and schedule something in the past. Unless I have a time machine, no one's gonna show up. <laughs> yes. Or Maybe I might, but no one else is. Um, <laughs> so that's important. So you, you do want to pay attention to these banners that they're throwing up here. So then you're yes. like, oh, actually, it's supposed to be Thursday next week, not this week. So let me do this. Pick it on this Thursday. And do the beat. Right? Now, you can – I could have changed it right here by picking a different day. That would have – I would just yeah, pick different, it. Different, just pick different it. Yeah, different ways to do it, I'm, yeah. I'm, I should have picked that, but it's easy to happen. So just you want to pay attention, okay? Especially if you're doing like reoccurring events, which we'll cover in a second. Things like that will will also cause if you start a reoccurring event on the wrong day, then they're all, especially if you're having a skip over a, a specific few days, which we'll cover and show. Um, you'll just basically start in the wrong time, and everything will be thrown off. Yeah. So let's sure. invite Kaylee. All right. So I'm gonna go in here and say Kaylee full. And we're going to say, um, uh, play b ball. <laughs> we're, we're ballers. You know how good I am. <laughs> she can slam dunk. Yeah, no luck. 
Uh, we're going to be uh, on the courts. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, yeah. Courts. So, <laughs> so uh, that's going to be uh, me inviting you. But I could easily, right, add more people on the two option. Yes. Now, one of the things that is missing from here, that if you're on Windows, correct me if I'm wrong, but there usually is a required section and an optional section when you're doing this on Outlook. Mm. So okay. in Outlook, let me, I, I don't want to make a liar. Let me check on my Outlook here because I don't, I don't want to be seeding seeds of... <laughs> seeds of lies. Of lies. <laughs> but I am pretty sure if I do a meeting request... Yeah. You get required... I understand. And you get okay. optional, which is nice because it kind of gives clarity to the people that you're attending. You might say, Kaylee needs to be there because she's doing the speech, yes. but maybe Jackie and Sean don't have to, but I do because Kaylee's doing the demo to me. So Okay, so if I hit send now, it's going to go ahead and send it. But let's say, oh, you know what? We're going to do that in Teams. We're not going to be, you know, we're not doing, uh, we're going to do on the Xbox <clears throat> because we're doing it virtually because of COVID. We're not meeting. Yes. On the court. That's so I'm smart. just going to dominate her digitally. <clears throat> so then I could just hit the little teams icon here and it's going to drop that uh, meeting invitation in here, uh, in here. Now it says details will be added after you send the invitation. What does that mean? Huh? Does that mean like the notes section? So you're like, oh, snap. It didn't put the Teams info. No, it's, it's going to be there. It's just I have to hit send first before it populates the info. Right. So is that, that's the link and all that stuff? Is that so I'm going to go ahead and send it to you to? now. Okay. It'll disappear for a second. It doesn't show up, and there's the people that Kaylee's referring to, so that lets you know that that's a meeting right there. Yeah. And then it also has a little uh, bell that lets you know that it's got a reminder on it. That's, that's that cool. I love that. I think that's honestly, it's so little, but it, it is, it can be very helpful. Right. Just knowing like, oh, I forgot to set a reminder on this. <laughs> that you know can what I'm really saying? stick it to you. Oh, yeah. that could really mess you up sometimes. I've done that. You're like, you get that call, like you come into the meeting. You're like, yes. what happened? How did I not yeah. know that I'm supposed to be there? Um, oh so gosh. now that I've waited a little bit longer, I can click on it. Um, and there's the team information, right? So there it is. Yes. And I got the. And you got the invite. Yeah, and then if I double click and open it up, there, there this is. Now, a lot of people don't know this, but Teams isn't magical. This link <laughs> is not like some kind of special plug that it drops in there. It is literally just a web link that it puts in there. And it just makes some nice little hyperlink colors and looks. All it does on the back end is it creates that invitation and that link, and it just drops it in the notes. Yeah. So you could put anything else in here, you know, you best show up. I'm going to talk trash. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so you got to show up to that meeting because I'm going to beat you down in your ex on the Xbox. <laughs> um, and I can hit send update and it's going to send her an update with that information that I just had in here. But yeah. it could have easily been actually we're going to start at 930 in the morning, not nine. Hmm. So if I hit send update, it's going to send that plus that. Also, part of the reason why I mentioned this is I can just right click. Um, yeah, hold on. Don't make a liar out of me. Uh, don't make a liar. It's a link here. It's just not letting me highlight. Yeah, try. Yeah, try doing that. Oh, there, there it is. So I can uh, copy yeah, that. It, like, it wants you to make sure that you have the whole thing. Uh, okay. And you can just paste it in a web browser, and it will launch your Teams for you automatically. Oh, yes. Yeah. And, Some and people I, don't know that. And I can send this update, right? And then I can say, all right, I don't want Kaylee to know this, but I'm going to have a new meeting, and I'm going to send it to Sean, and I'm going to send it to John. I could type here, Judy. Okay, launch me. Beat down. <laughs> Spill your name. 
You did create the spelling of my name, so. Yeah. Oh, you would think I would know that. <laughs> so uh, watch me beat down Kaylee and Xbox, right? So I'm, I'm now going to send this invite to Sean and Judy, right? And we're doing it at 930, right? So we want them to be on time. Yes. And I can right click and I can paste that Teams meeting right there. So how do you, can you send, can you make sure that theirs also gets a reminder as well? Uh, they're going to get the reminder to the appointment. Okay. Yeah. So if they accept this, it's going to show up with the meeting invitation, but it's not going to be, um, it's not going to be in teams. Like if they went to teams, it's not going to show up as a calendar appointment that has a teams join in it. Okay. But I'm kind of down low sending this link to them that they can then hop in the meeting and join it. <laughs> yes. Okay. Since they're, since they're in my organization, I can do yeah. that. Now, if it was somebody outside the organization that <laughs> right. They need guest access to be able to do that. Um, but that's, I'm just showing you like how easy to, to just copy and paste. You could just, this, this could be a, just drop it in a new email and say, oh, here, here's the link to the, in, to the meeting invite. Right. right. And this is a great example of um, being um, kind of productive in the sense of helping someone who may not be familiar with Teams. And what I mean by that is somebody who doesn't have the application, who has never really used it before, but you're trying to invite them to one of your team's meetings. This is a great way to send it in something like Outlook that is familiar, um, where all you have to do is click on the link and they can even paste it in their browser and pull it up on their browser so that they don't even have to download the app.